In October 2017, London got its largest and best new park since the death of Henry VIII in 1547. So my first comment on Walthamstow wetlands is thank you and congratulations to Thames Water for allowing public access to what we used to call Walthamstow reservoirs. Many people are sceptical about water privatisation, myself included. But when you compare the attitudes of the privatised Thames Water to those of the old Thames Water Authority, you can only conclude that privatisation was good. In the bad old days, the reservoirs were defended like a military airfield, and I once saw armed guards patrolling inside the security fence. On another occasion, I remember asking permission for a visit and being told it was impossible for operational reasons, which could not be explained to a landscape architect. I'd like to know how and why the staff succeeded in opening the area to public access. Perhaps a dukedom would be too great a reward, but a few knighthoods are surely merited. And if knighthoods could be posthumous, I'd also give some to the engineers who planned this watery world of woodlands, walks, islands and embankments. It's an extraordinary and beautiful landscape composition. Even better than in the 1980 aerial photo. It's great to have ten reservoirs snuggled together, and it's exciting that they're on different levels. There are beautiful serpentine walks between the water bodies, and the whole place is calm, relaxed, and much less mannered than the RSPB site in Raynham. We also need to congratulate Waltham Forest and the Heritage Lottery Fund for helping to fund the project, the London Wildlife Trust for taking on the management of the wetlands, and the landscape architects who did the feasibility study and managed the project's implementation. They've given us one of London's best parks, and many of the others are not parks in the historic sense. They're garks, by which I mean a hybrid between a garden and a park. At Walthamstow, the land is enclosed and locked at night. Like ancient parks in China, the Middle East and Europe, which were places for keeping animals, usually for hunting, the wetlands are rich in fish, birds and well-equipped anglers. Some of the fishing is take-out and take-home, but most of it is catch and release. I don't think the name wetlands is quite right, because the word has a similar meaning to marshland, and these are man-made lakes. It could be known as London's Lake District. The paths between the lakes were designed for horse-drawn maintenance vehicles, so for pedestrians their geometry is a little slow and a little dull, but for cyclists it's just right, and two kilometres of cycle path is a terrific addition to London's cycle infrastructure. Our city needs a network for leisure cycling as well as for commuter cycling, and the routes in Walthamstow are well connected to existing cycle paths in the Lee Valley Regional Park and Waltham Forest generally. The paths allow good views of some of London's clusters of high buildings. They look like romantic castles in the dreamy distance. If you think the planners and architects have made a terrible mess of Stratford, I agree with you. But look at this view across the reservoir. It's beautiful, and one might be reminded of Constable's views of Salisbury Cathedral. Projects like Walthamstow Wetlands should be suggested and supported by a strategic landscape planning authority. This could have been the Lee Valley Park Authority, which gets money from all the London boroughs and should support projects with London-wide benefits. And it could grow into a London Green Space Commission, which is much needed. A project like Walthamstow cannot be undertaken as a single-purpose park project. Nobody could afford it. 
but combining recreational use with the supply of water for 3.5 million people has given London a great place and a great example of landscape urbanism. Because the physical form of the landscape derives from ecological processes and urban functions, including water storage, fishing, cycling, walking and wildlife habitat creation. 